Happy Saturday, everybody. Pastor David Lambert here from First Baptist Church, Thompson, Georgia. You know, a few years ago, I'm not going to tell you exactly how many, I turned 40 years old. I don't know what it was about turning 40 years old that was so monumental. Um, I don't know, maybe turning 50, 60, it's the same way. I don't think I felt quite the same way when I turned 30 as when I turned 40. But I've got some great friends and my family, and they did such a great job of trying to kind of smooth it out, and we had a lot of fun celebrating. And one of the things that they did is they gave me all kinds of gifts that had to do with 40. So somebody gave me a bucket with 40 uh, dumb, dumb suckers. I don't think they were trying to say anything about that. Uh, I had a bag of 40 Green Army men, a, a package of 40 erasers, and there was a cute little note that went with all of them explaining it. Um, just lots of things that were 40. Uh, my two favorite ones, the ones I still have, uh, this is one that was uh, made by the Wards, uh, and they made it out of Lego, because they know how much I love Lego, and it says 40 on it. And then I had another one that was from my daughter, Abby, and it was uh, these 40 little butterflies uh, and bugs and bees and everything that were just made with her fingerprints. Uh, it says 40 little love bugs from your little love bug. So I, I keep both of these in my office, and I cherish those that reminder. There's just something about that number 40, isn't there? You know, in the Bible, there's something about that number 40 as well. And what got me to thinking about this was I actually saw something on Facebook. And of course, just because you see something on Facebook doesn't mean it's true, right? So I did a little bit of digging, did some research, and I found out that the word quarantine, which is, you know, one of those words that's floating around that we use, we're not really necessarily quarantined. I mean, if somebody has the coronavirus, then yeah, they're being asked to quarantine, but we're, you know, isolating ourselves a little bit, practicing some social distancing, uh, you know, stay at home or shelter in place, whatever. Those really aren't the same thing as quarantine, but that's kind of a catch-all that people are using for all of this. And what I saw on Facebook, what I researched and, and saw was true, was that word quarantine actually comes from an old Italian word that they would use to talk about the length of time that a ship would have to be held off coast to make sure that it didn't have any disease. And it comes from the Latin for 40. So literally a quarantine is a space of 40 days, a 40 day period of isolation. Well, that got me to thinking about the number 40, as you know, the number 40 in the Bible has a lot of significance. Uh, we know that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. We know that there was 40-year time period for Moses after he left Egypt when he was attending his father-in-law's sheep in Midian. God was preparing him. We know that from the time that God promised Isaac to Abraham, it was 40 years before Abraham was born. I mean, sorry, before Isaac was born. We know that it rained 40 days and 40 nights for the flood. We know that Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the law from God for 40 days. And then when Israel sinned against God, Moses prayed for Israel for 40 days. Uh, we know that Jesus was 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. Uh, the number 40, Jesus was uh, 40 days between the, the resurrection and the ascension. These are, they just keep coming to my mind. Throughout the Bible, you see this period of 40, 40 years, 40 days. What is the significance of that? And I don't think those are all figurative. I, I think a lot of those are literal, if not all of them. But there's something in the way God has created the world to work. There's something in the economy of God's kingdom about that number 40. And whenever we see it, it's almost always a period of testing, of trial, of preparation. You know, preparing Abraham to be the father of this mighty nation, preparing Moses to lead that people out of slavery, preparing Israel to inhabit the promised land and to be that special chosen people for God, preparing Jesus for his ministry, and then preparing the disciples, the apostles, for the birth of the church. So I got to thinking, what is God using this? And it's not a literal 40 days. And, and for some people, it may be 40 days. For others, it may be more. So, but just in general, what is God using this time of quarantine? What is he using this to do to prepare you? 
How is he using this to prepare me? In God's word, and we've been studying this in James, in our Wednesday night James study, uh, and I invite you to join us Wednesday night. I'd be more than glad to send you the Zoom link and let you be a part of that. But James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2, James says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James is saying that when we're suffering trials, when we're in these periods of testing, this time of quarantine, we need to let it work in us to produce faith and perseverance. And when it really finishes its work, we come out on the other side mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, there's a trick to this, though, because we have an option. We can wallow in what we're going through. We can bemoan it, we can complain about it, we can get all stressed out about it, or we can choose to ask ourselves the question, what is God doing in the midst of this? How is God using this to teach me something? How is he using this to, to chip away at the worldliness, at the sin, at the doubt in my life? How is he using this to till the soil of my heart? What weeds need to be pulled out? What branches need to be pruned? We have a choice as to how we approach this season of life. Now, what James says is the key is wisdom. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. If we have the right wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God, then we can come through this experience and be better on the other side of it. There's a psalm, Psalm 139, that says uh, that God is not hidden from us, that we cannot be separated from God, that no matter where we go, his presence is there. Even if you are quarantined at home or self-isolated, you're sheltering in place, you're not at work, your kids aren't at school, God is there with you. You can't leave him. You can't escape him. But the end of that psalm, it says, Search me, O God and know my heart. Test me. Try me. Examine me. And know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I want you to let that be your prayer through all of this. Say, God, whatever it is you want to teach me in this, teach me. Search me out. Examine me. Test me. Help me to examine myself. What is it you're teaching me? What is it you're doing in my life? What are you preparing me? What are you preparing First Baptist Church of Thompson, Georgia, or whatever church you're a part of? What are you preparing us for when this is all done? When the 40 days in the wilderness is done and we cross over that Jordan River to the other side. When we can begin to inhabit our church buildings and our schools and our workplaces once again, how will we be different? How will we have changed? Now, our first Sunday back, whenever that's going to be, I want us to celebrate with testimony. And I know that that first Sunday back, not everybody may be able to be back. And, and we, can, we can let you send in recordings if you can't be here that Sunday. If you're not yet comfortable, we still want to hear from you. But I want that Sunday to be a Sunday of testimony, a Sunday of celebration and praise. And I would love to hear from some of you as to what God has taught you through all of this, how he has used this period of testing to grow you, to reveal to you some areas in your life that needed some work. So be in prayer about that. Be thinking about that. And let's pray with great anticipation for that first Sunday back and to hear from one another what God has done in our lives during this time. I hope you'll tune in to us uh, tomorrow for worship. We're going to be continuing the series on Joseph. Uh, Joseph certainly went through his own time of testing and trial, and God did some amazing things in his life. God worked on Joseph. He grew Joseph, matured him, completed him, and prepared him for a great task to save the country of Egypt, to save even his own family. So join us tomorrow in worship. 
and I look forward to seeing you soon.